Hi guys, in one of my previous videos, we defined how to handle GraphQL API errors within the Spring Boot app. This time, we will make them secure. For this purpose, I have written an article on Medium about this subject, so go check later for more. You have the links to the article and the previous video in the description. Okay, grab your keyboard and let's get started. I decided to talk about this subject because the way we secure a GraphQL API is different from the way we do it for RESTful API. GraphQL has only one endpoint, which is usually slash GraphQL, and we cannot filter the request based on the endpoint URL. We need to filter based on resolver's method and apply specific security policy to resolver's method. Some method will be public. Others will need access as authenticated user or admin users. This is made possible by using custom annotation in Java coupled with aspect-oriented programming. No need to be an expert in aspect-oriented programming, just the basics, trust me. First of all, clone the code base with these comments so that you can follow along. Now you may have something that looks like this in your IDE. We will make the resources create user public and get user available for authenticated user only. These two resources are already defined in the project that you just checked out. We will create an additional resource, delete user, which takes a username as a parameter, and we will make it available for admin users only. Okay, let's start by adding the needed dependency for security and testing. And yes, we are going to test our security. It's very important, guys. If it's not tested, it's broken. Next, we add a new resource, delete user. Go ahead and open the file usermutation.java and add the method like so. Don't worry about the red, we are going to create it in user service. Press Alt Enter on that method and click create method. In that method, we just remove the corresponding user to our list of any memory users in user service. Actually, we don't have a database. So user service is persisting its user in an in-memory list of users. Great, now let's define the corresponding schema. Nothing complicated here. We just declare a method matching the resolver Java method signature. Awesome stuff. Now it's time to effectively start securing. This is our security strategy. First, let the GraphQL endpoint reach us by letting him cross the URL based security barriers. Those barriers are not for him. Next, it is at the resolver method level that we will define, thanks to custom annotation, what is the security level needed to execute each method. Finally, with aspects, we will be able to match our annotation to the desired security check. 1. Let the GraphQL reach us. We will define the Spring security configuration that allows that. We create a security package, then securityconfig.java within that package. That class extends the security configurer adapter so that we can override its configure method to handle incoming HTTP requests. Decorate our class with enable web security to activate web security engine and enable global method security to enable security checking at the method level with annotation support. Now press Ctrl O to override the configure method that takes an HTTP security object as a parameter. Here we define a set of rules among which the one to allow the GraphQL endpoint and the request to use GraphQL as well, a graphic web-based tool that we will need to test some requests. Notice that just the GraphQL related elements are allowed. Great! This is all that we had to do for the step one. Two, so, custom annotations. We'll define two annotations, admin secure and unsecure. Why not defining an annotation secure? Because all resolvers methods that are not annotated will be secured by default. You know, 
it's always better to forget to remove security on a method that was supposed to be unsecure than to forget to put security on a method that should be secure. Okay, let's call that. We create an annotation class admin secure. It is applied to method, so we use element.method as target. Then, similarly, the unsecured annotation. Quite interesting. Now what? We will apply this annotation on our resolver method. Create user is public and delete user is admin secure. No need to annotate user query. It's going to be secure by default. Final step, the aspect. First of all, we will tell the Spring engine that we want to use aspect-oriented programming in our application by declaring that somewhere in the configuration, like in the main class, for example. Open your main application class and add this annotation. Now, we have to define the aspect itself. But wait, first of all, what is an aspect? Aspects are related to aspect-oriented programming. You can see an aspect as a characteristic or a feature, which is a cross-cutting constant, which means that is transversal, repeated, or duplicated across several types of object, and that is not easy to encapsulate. Aspects, most of the time, are not related to business logic. They can be metrics, logging, caching, and even security. Aspect-oriented programming helps us to modularize such behavior in one object or module so that they become more efficient to handle. This is possible by adding additional behavior to the code without modifying the code itself. Let's illustrate that with an example. We have a bunch of methods in which the metric about execution time is a subject of concern. We want to trigger a timer before and after each of these methods without duplicating the start and stop timer code across all methods. Well, we can mark those methods by annotating them with a custom annotation like add time count. Then, with aspect oriented programming, we can create an aspect class that will match the mark, which is a point code in aspect terminology, and apply the additional behavior that we want, which is an advice in aspect terminology. The behavior can be start a timer before each execution of those methods and stop the timer after execution. Another example, you can define an aspect that will match method situated under the package xxx.bankaccount, which is the point code, and trigger an additional security check, which is the advice, before their execution. And this is all in one class, the code duplication, the code spread all over your application. Awesome, isn't it? Yes, it is, of course. You know what? We are going to do something similar. Our cross-cutting concern is the security. Our point cuts are the custom annotations, I mean admin secure and unsecure, and the resolver Java classes, which extends the GraphQL resolver class, and that are sitting in our application. Our advice, the behaviors, will be to check security before the execution of methods that are annotated. Now that all this is crystal clear, we can define our aspect class. Our class is decorated with the aspect annotation. It's a spring component. This aspect is going to be an interceptor and a very important one, as it guarantees security. So we want it to be triggered the first if ever other interceptor I define. I will start by defining the content of the behavior for checking if a user is connected as an admin. I'm just using the Spring Security context to check that the authentication context is not null and contains the admin role. Otherwise, the user is not authenticated as an admin. Now we will define what are the point cards, you know, the mark that our aspect needs to catch. First, admin secure related methods mark. To do so, we use the 
add point cut annotation and tell him which annotation to target by giving him the fully qualified domain name of the class. By the way, make sure you use the good package name, otherwise it's not going to work. No need to implement the method. Great, let's go on with unsecure annotated method max. I will just duplicate and modify the previous method at its almost the same call. Once more, don't mess up with the annotation fully qualified domain name. Awesome. Remember you want the security check to be applied only to resolver classes? I mean, classes that extend GraphQL resolver and that are sitting under our root package. Let's define those point cards. Starting by is defined in application point code. We are using the point code annotation and the within keyword. Copy and paste the root package of your application. Don't trust your memory. This star is to say we match all classes that are under the root package. And the last point code matches all GraphQL resolver methods. Same annotation except that we are targeting the fully qualified domain name of the GraphQL Resolver class. Great work! We are almost done with this aspect class. It just remains the returning logic of our advice. I mean, by that, the running logic of our security checks. We want to answer the question, before which point code do we run which behavior? I'm just pasting the code as it's simple to understand. Notice the before annotation telling that we want this method to be executed before method annotated as admin secure. Copy the point code method name we've defined with the brackets and paste as the annotation parameters. This is for the admin security check. For the simple authentication check, this is the method. We are checking the Spring Security Authentication context as we did for checking the admin role. If the user is not authenticated, we throw an exception telling him he should log in first. Don't forget to define the unauthenticated access exception as extending GraphQL error and the runtime exception. You can check out the complete code on GitHub. This is a really big if statement. It's better to extract it in another method to enhance the readability of our code. Select the content of the statement and press Ctrl M. Give it the name is authenticated and modify it so that it matches the name by returning the negation of that statement. And in security check, check if not authenticated. Okay, now we indicate that the do security check method is executed before all GraphQL resolver method that are defined within our application and that are not annotated as unsecured. Awesome stuff! We are done, finally! And now we just have to test all that. We have two ways to test, either by using GraphQL or by writing tests. Just for GraphQL demonstration purposes for those who don't know it, we will test some of our resources using GraphQL but we will write a JUnit test to automate all the possible scenarios. To launch GraphQL, start your application and reach the endpoint slash GraphQL in a browser. It's GraphEQL, don't forget the I. If I try to create a user without being connected, it works as expected. If I try to get a user, I have a message telling me that I have to log in first. Similarly, if I try to delete the user, I'm not allowed to do that as well without being connected. However, we need to test more scenario. To do so, we we'll write a test file that tries all the possible scenarios and that you can automate during a continuous integration process. Go ahead, create a file GraphQL security test in the test package. We we'll run it with the Spring Runner so that the beans could get injected in our test. We will need the Spring Boot test to load the Spring context and make the bean we will need available for us. For this to work with the GraphQL context, we need to load the context with a random path. Otherwise, we get some weird failures. 
We will also use the dirty context annotation to make sure that the context is clean from all the time before each test method. This is done to make sure each test method execution is independent and not influenced by other test methods. Use this notation only and only if you really need it as it increases considerably the test execution time. Looks like I forgot to add a dependency. GraphQL Spring Boot Starter Test add this dependency in case you don't have it yet and import the missing class. This bin is going to be auto wired. We define the bin that we will need for our test. We define the constants that we will need as password and username. I will just copy and paste the test method while explaining of course to reduce the length of the video. In this test method, we want to make sure that accessing an unsecure method without being connected is okay. The display name annotation is a GUnit5 annotation that helps us describe what our test is doing so you no longer need to struggle writing meaningful test method names. For this next test method, we will need the user query resolver. So let's declare it. Basically, this method wants to make sure that if I'm not authenticated, then I cannot access a secure resource such as get a user that is secured by default. This other test method is in charge of checking that if I'm authenticated, then I can access a secure resource. Notice we are using the with mock user annotation to mock an authenticated user. We create a user first because get user will fail if it doesn't find a user. We don't want our test to fail for that reason. One more scenario is to check that unauthenticated user access to an admin secure resource fails by throwing an unauthenticated access exception. The scenario before the last is checking that although I'm authenticated, if I'm not authorized as admin, then I fail by facing an unauthenticated access exception. And finally, the last scenario is checking that as an admin authenticated user, I can call an admin secure method such as delete user. By doing this, we are pretty sure that we got all the possible scenarios covered. Now we can launch this test file. When you launch a test, in case you are getting error from the GUnit Vintage engine, don't care about it. Our tests are executed by the new GUnit 5 Jupyter engine. And yes, all of our tests are run successfully. Congratulations guys. Now we can go ahead and apply what we just did together in every GraphQL like Spring Boot projects, whatever the size, and you will have your resources secured. I hope you enjoy it. Tell me what you think in the comments. Also, don't forget to like the video, clap for the icon medium, and share if it's something that can be interesting for others. See you next time for the next episode of GraphQL with Framework.